Stop. If you're thinking about building an off-the-grid custom home, then you're going to want to watch this video first because I'm going to explain to you five things that you need to consider before you ever decide on a building plan or start construction on your property. Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and for the past eight years I've been helping families get set up to help their house survive a loss of the electric grid. And over that time, I've also had a chance to work with a lot of uh, custom homeowners that are actually doing a new build home with the goal of having that home be able to survive a loss of the electric grid. It's also a process that my wife and I went through ourselves back in 2018, building the home that I'm standing in right here today. So today what I'm gonna be doing is presenting five things that you need to think about and decide on before you agree on a building plan for an off-grid custom home. And the first thing is the location. Now, one of the things I've said in the past is that when the event hits, whatever that event may be, it's gonna be better for you and your family if you are where everybody else isn't. In other words, you wanna be in a place with very, very low population density. Of course, if you work or if you have other demands that cause you to go into the city, then you wanna be close enough that you can access your place of work, your place of worship or banking, shopping, those sorts of things but still far enough away that if you had to retreat back to your property and shelter in place for a prolonged period of time, you have relatively low population density, right? The more starving and panicked people there are around you, the less safe and secure you and your family are going to be. Uh, I recommend finding a place that you can access without having to use interstate highways whatsoever. Uh, in the event of certain crises, the government may respond by imposing travel restrictions. And so if you can get to and from your property on country roads without having to use interstate highways, I think that's a very, very prudent thing to do. And that's kind of the approach that I've taken uh, personally. The next thing you're gonna, uh, gonna wanna look at is your southern exposure. Now, if part of your preparedness plan is doing a renewable energy system so you can run with solar and battery power off the grid, then you're gonna wanna orient the house in such a way that the area on the roof that you're, you're planning to use for mounting solar panels has a good southern exposure. That way it'll get both morning and afternoon sunlight. Ideally, that can be the rear of the house so that your, your solar panels are not visible from the street or necessarily visible to your neighbors, but they still get a good southern exposure. And, and the hours that we're looking to optimize are 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That sort of core, those core hours of the day we wanna make sure we're getting good direct sunlight with no shading um, on that area of the roof where you're gonna be mounting your solar panels. Now, of course, if you have lots of open land and you prefer, you can always install the solar panels on a ground mounted structure. Uh, in that case, you may even get better exposure because you can orient them exactly perfectly due south and at the a perfect ideal tilt angle. But in general, as long as you have a good partial southern exposure on the back of your house, you're gonna be in a good setup for installing and being able to run off of solar power. The next thing I wanna talk about is the appliance selection, particularly the heating appliances, but really this applies for all appliances. Um, whatever you can do to conserve up front, in other words, whatever you can do to reduce the amount of electrical draw from the house, that's gonna pay you back in the form of allowing you to install a smaller and less expensive renewable energy system if you're preparing to be able to run grid down. So wherever possible, please use LED lighting. Uh, please use modern Energy Star appliances. If you have an old refrigerator or freezer that is probably due to be replaced anyway, now's probably a good time to do that. Uh, because again, as the more we can do to reduce the electrical demand of the house, um, the more efficient, the more payback, and the better performance you're gonna get from your renewable energy system. The other thing you wanna consider when it comes to your heating-related appliances is also having access to an alternate fuel source. Okay, heating the home is actually one of the largest, if not the largest energy consumer for most homes. And if you're preparing to be able to run in a grid down world and still enjoy creature comforts like central heating and air conditioning, then you're gonna wanna have a means of heating the house that does not involve you know, consuming a, a lot of electricity. So for example, an, an electric heat pump, if you have an all electric heat pump system, that's not gonna be a good fit for a grid down heating plan. In fact, if you recall, recall my previous video, 
on the subject, I presented three solutions for off-grid heating that require little or no electricity, but still allow you to have you know, hot air within the home so you can maintain your standard of living. Uh, what a lot of our clients choose to do is to install a propane tank and they can use a propane furnace for heating, which has a very, very minimal electrical draw. You're basically burning the propane for the heat. The only electrical draw is just to run the air handler to circulate air within the house. So that's one great way to do it that doesn't really require you to change your lifestyle at all. But some other solutions are like a wood stove insert. If you have a wood fireplace and chimney at your house, uh, a wood stove iron insert is a great way that you can still enjoy the wood fire, but do it in a way that allows you to capture and hold a lot of that heat down in the house. So again, if you're heating in an uh, in a off-grid mode and you don't want to put too much draw on your solar and battery system, you can heat the home there with the wood stove. And then of course a pellet stove is a good option as well. If you don't want to deal with having to chop wood and having a wood shed, uh, you can do a pellet stove, which looks almost the same, but you can just buy pellet fuel from your local farm supply or tractor supply store uh, and store that and not have to deal with the, with the chores of, of the wood chopping and so forth. Now the same idea applies to your cooking appliances. You know, if, if you have a traditional or if you're planning on putting in a traditional all electric stove and burner, uh, I would caution you against that if, if you wanna be able to cook meals for your family in a grid down world. Uh, again, one of the easiest substitutes is just to use propane or gas for your cooktop. So you're using gas as the heat source. The only electricity required is that little clicking for the igniter to get the spark, to get the flame going but then you're cooking with heat coming from the gas fuel source. So that's the approach that we used here. Um, if you don't want to, to, to bother with gas, another option might be uh, to have a, um, a plug-in uh, like induction cooktop, which plugs into a standard 120 volt wall outlet. Uh, most likely, uh, if you have an all electric stove in your house or you're de determined to install one in the new home, uh, it's going to be on a 40 or 50 amp breaker, might be maybe even larger. So that's generally not going to be connected to your solar battery backup system. You want to make sure you have an alternate means of uh, being able to cook food for yourself and your family uh, in a grid down world. The other thing with respect to alternate fuels is, and again, if you're preparing to survive in a prolonged grid down environment, uh, I always recommend my clients to have a, a, a fuel burning generator as a backup to your solar power and battery system. And the reason for this is this, you know, we're in winter time right now as I'm doing this week recording, and it's not uncommon in the winter to have an entire week with overcast weather. And so if the grid were to go down and you find yourself in the middle of winter where you have, you've had overcast weather for day after day after day, your solar batteries are gonna to start to drain down and the panels are not gonna be able to keep up to recharge them each day. And so it's nice to have an option to just plug in a fuel burning generator. You run the generator for a few hours to get your batteries charged back full, and then you can switch back to running off the battery backup uh, solar system. So it helps you stretch your fuel a lot further than if you were using the generator only, uh, but it still you know, gives you a backup to your backup so that hopefully you'll never be without power, even in a prolonged grid down event. And then the last thing I would suggest to you consider is the soil quality. Uh, oftentimes when you're doing a new construction home, if the land has just recently been cleared right before the construction starts, the land may not settle enough for it to percolate properly. And this can affect your septic system. Uh, I actually have personal experience going through this uh, here when we built our house three years ago. And we had a lot of trees that were in what is now the backyard of my house. And when those trees were torn up, it took about nine months to a year for that soil to settle back there. Now here's how it affected us with our septic system. We had originally planned to put the septic field out in the back, which is away from the house and, and slightly downhill, where we could have just had a gravity powered septic system. Gravity would just naturally take the, the wastewater away from the house. However, because the soil had not settled sufficiently to where it would perk properly, uh, we actually had to do the uh, septic field in the front of the house, which is slightly above grade from the, the house itself, which means that we had to add an additional electric pump to pump that water uphill. Uh, it's not a huge draw, but wherever possible, if you can minimize the amount of electrical draw that you need on your renewable energy system, 
it's just gonna help you run that much further and that much longer in a grid down mode. So I would also consider, talk to your builder, talk to your contractor about the soil quality and the options for placement of the septic field before you settle on your design. Well, folks, this has been five things to consider before building a custom off-the-grid home. Um, as always, if you're getting good value from this channel, make sure that you click on that like button and click on that subscribe button. That forces the video platforms to go ahead and show this video to more people. And as always, be sure to share this with your friends or anybody else you think will benefit from the information here. As, as always, I'm Joe Ordia, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.